pounds of explosives left inside the storage locker in Ohio. But as the ATF showed us, even a five-stick car bomb creates an enormous blast. The bomb outside the Turkish mission went off at about 10 in the morning. Three people were seriously hurt, and the building was severely damaged. I saw a sheet of flame come up from the car, pieces flying in all directions. Not long after the New York blast, a group calling itself the Justice Commandos for the Armenian Genocide claimed credit for the attack, as well as attacks that same day in London and Los Angeles. But the UN attack was by far the most serious. Mr. Tapayan had sent a number of people to canvas the United Nations prior to that bombing. They reported back to one person, and that person was Mr. Tapayan. Elliot says he was told that Tapayan was directly involved in planning the operation, had hand-delivered the dynamite, and personally directed planting the car bomb. Now you're about as far as you can get from your original theory of the Cleveland Mafia. Right. And it's beginning to look like some sort of international terrorism network. Yes, definitely. Pete Elliott was discovering that Murad Tapalian was not just a man who could use his charisma to schmooze with the President of the United States and members of Congress. According to people who knew him, he was also a man who could use that charisma to mobilize others to violence in the name of the Armenian cause. I can tell you that every single Armenian told me stories about their grandparents and about their relatives and how Generations were cut off. I heard it. I saw their tears. I saw them cry. I saw some of them fall to the ground, and these were bombers. These were people that handled explosives. I heard them. They had a lot of respect for Mr. Tapayan. But the Armenian activists who had been willing to help plan and execute bombing attacks in the 80s had become teachers, doctors, and bankers by the 90s. They thought they had put their violent past behind them. These witnesses described Tapalian as a leader as someone they were emotionally connected to. Why the heck did they talk to you? They're different people now. They worked for their cause. They didn't have anything to lose 25 years ago, but today they did. Elliot wasn't the first to think Tapalian might have been involved in the New York bombing. In 1988, he was questioned about it by the FBI, but denied participating in the attack. The witnesses now talking to Pete Elliot were telling a different story. In almost every case, he says, the witnesses decided to come forward only after they were told that the abandoned explosives had been left in a place that posed so much danger to so many people. They couldn't believe Mr. Tapayan was stupid enough to still have these explosives, but more stupid to keep them next to a daycare center, a gas station, and a school. You've been investigating this case. You've been talking to everybody. These are people with bombs. Were you worried about something happening to you? I guess that's always in the back of, back of your mind, and uh, I believe you become numb to potentially what could happen to you. There's never any direct threats towards me. But some militant members of the Armenian community were worried about what Tapalian might say if he was ever taken into custody. Silencing a former leader suddenly looked like a good idea. Word was out that Mr. Tapalian, um, if he would talk, could potentially put together a lot of Armenian crimes directed at the Turks from years and years ago. So you were concerned at this point that suddenly this guy with the bullseye around his head that right. you've been tracking right. could possibly be killed? Yes. The year-long pursuit between Pete Elliott the hunter and Murad Tapalian the hunted had reached a crossroads. But if he was to warn Tapalian, Elliott would have to knock on Tapalian's front door and meet him face to face. What happened when you identified yourself as Agent Pete Elliott of the ATF? I think he looked completely in shock. I said, listen, I did receive information that your life could potentially be in danger. I'm going to give you the opportunity. You want to sit down and talk to me? Um, we can try to work this whole thing out. And uh, he never took me up on that offer. Instead, Elliott says Topolian dared Elliott to make his case or drop the investigation altogether. Elliot knew he needed airtight evidence. He began to wonder if there had been something else, some other clue inside the locker that perhaps he had overlooked, something that would prove that Topalian knew what was in there. What about that bank deposit envelope he'd found on top of one of the boxes of dynamite? The address was 25890 
Emory Road in Warrensville Heights from a Cleveland Trust that went out of business, I believe, in about 1979. I was able to dig and dig and find out that Murad Tapayan had an account at that specific branch. What's more, the bank branch had been just a few doors down from Tapalian's convenience store. One more piece of the puzzle, but it still wasn't enough. Then Elliot remembered the final item he'd found in the locker, the torn trench coat lying on top of the explosives boxes. Sent that up to our ATF lab, and they were able to find two very old hairs from 20 years ago that were inside one of the sleeves, I believe, of that coat. Elliot had the hairs sent to a lab for DNA analysis. It was a long shot, but he knew the results could be critical to the case. I still remember the day when I received a call from the lab, and I think they had to actually pull me out of the roof of my building because I jumped so high when they told me it matched up to Mr. Topalian's. It was the last decisive piece in what seemed like a thousand-piece puzzle. Elliot finally had the evidence he needed to make an arrest. Went relatively pretty easy. He got out of his car. Um, I walked up to him and I told him he was under arrest. He was in complete and utter shock. Do you remember what you said to Pete Elliott at that moment? Yeah, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, we did. I, we shook hands, and uh, we said we did it. We 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 did what we had to do. We did what we wanted to do. We did it. We did what we wanted to do. So, burgers or pizza for lunch? That's about it. That's about right. That's exactly right. After a relentless four-year investigation, federal agent Pete Elliott has finally made an arrest in the mystery of the abandoned storage locker packed with deadly explosives, machine guns, and other weapons. But after so many years, would the suspect, Murad Topolian, face justice? Here again, John Hockenberry. The wave of Armenian terrorism against Turkish interests in the United States ended in the mid-80s. Pete Elliott's investigation had stirred up memories that no doubt many hoped had finally faded away. As for Murad Topalian, he was charged with numerous crimes, including conspiracy to steal, transport, and use explosives. The government said he had planned acts of violence against Turkish government facilities and businesses and people of Turkish descent. But he was never convicted of conspiracy or any acts of violence, including the bombing at the United Nations. Topalian pled guilty to storing stolen explosives and possession of machine guns. In January 2001, he was given the maximum sentence of 37 months in prison. In a letter to the judge, Topalian said the locker was supposed to be used to store records of people contributing to the Armenian cause. And he insisted the locker had not been opened for 15 years. Topalian always claimed that Pete Elliott's investigation was designed to discredit the Armenian cause. We don't know now if Topalian still thinks what he did to further that cause was just. He declined repeated requests for an interview. Nor do we know if he expected his powerful political connections to somehow shield him from prosecution, or if he figured there was just no way to trace him to that abandoned storage room back in Bedford. One thing is certain, Murad Topalian didn't figure on ATF agent Pete Elliott. I looked and I didn't quit. I just kept digging, I kept digging, and I kept digging. But maybe that's one of the lessons here. That powerful people, like Napoleon, right. sometimes get a pass, but they don't get a pass from an agent who's willing to go all the way for the truth. It may be a day, it may be a month, it may be a year, but it could be 25 years later that people, the government, come back in your life and make you accountable for your actions that happened 25 years ago. Two years ago, President Bush named Pete Elliott U.S. Marshal for Cleveland, Ohio. Murad Topolian was released from federal prison in 2003 and is still under law enforcement supervision until September of next year. That's all for this edition of Dateline Sunday. We'll see you again for Dateline Friday at 8, 7 central. I'm Stone Phillips, and for all of us at NBC News, good night. Line is a presentation of NBC News. More Americans watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world.